Hi there guys, Mobro here. I uh, just wanted to share a new program with you that I've developed. It's actually a simulation to show you the curvature of the Earth at various altitudes. So I start right at the, at the bottom. I'm here at six feet and I go up thousands of miles uh, just to simulate how the curve, curve of the Earth would appear at those altitudes. So rather than going out and buying uh, expensive pieces of equipment such as let's say a hot air balloon or a space shuttle, I decided instead to create it uh, in the comfort of my own home. So I've, we have formulas to calculate the distance to the horizon. We have formulas to calculate the curvature of the Earth. Uh, we also know um, the size of the Earth. So if you look at Wikipedia, uh, the radius of the Earth is 6,371 kilometers or 3,959 miles. Uh, so we have the necessary information uh, to create this simulation and that's what, I, uh, what I'm actually attempting to do here. So right now the observer is at at six feet uh, high, six feet off the ground, um, and he's able to see a maximum of three miles. Okay, so the assumption that we're making here is first of all that he's on a sphere, uh, and second, there's nothing obstructing his view. So there's no trees, no buildings, no atmosphere, no weather. Nothing is in the way. He has perfect vision, and this would be the maximum that he could see. Uh, the tilt. Uh, if you if you uh, imagine yourself on a sphere as you rise in altitude you're able to see further around the sphere in front of you uh, but as you rise in altitude the horizon would be lowering because you're looking further around down towards uh, the the middle of the sphere uh, so the horizon needs to lower as you raise in altitude so in order for you to continually uh, see the horizon, you'd have to actually tilt your head down a fraction of a degree. So at six feet off the ground, you'd have to tilt your head uh, 0 0.0682 degrees. Uh, very insignificant, uh, but as you get higher, you'll notice that it's quite a bit of a tilt that, you, that the observer would have to readjust to in order to see the horizon. Okay, uh, I'm not actually lowering the horizon in my program. Uh, what I'm actually doing is keeping it fixed at the top of the screen. Uh, so what, uh, what I'm showing you instead is the tilt that the observer uh, would have to, uh, to do in order to see the horizon at a fixed position. If I lowered it, I you would basically be um, seeing this line lower and go off the screen and that would be pointless. So I, I wanted to show you the tilt. And this actually tilt is a very important uh, piece of information that people could use uh, as arguments. All right. Uh, so as as we raise in, in altitude, you can see we, we can see further down the sphere, uh, and therefore the tilt uh, also goes up a little bit. Okay. So you'll see even at eight feet, it's it's very it's it's less than point one point zero one degrees. So very insignificant. Uh, but you'll notice that as you get higher, um, you this will increase quite a bit. Uh, but the horizon, you can see it appears as a flat line, and that's actually what it would be at eight feet because you're so close uh, to the Earth. Uh, even though we're assuming it to be a sphere, uh, it will appear uh, totally flat for you. Okay, so uh, just to help you understand this, 3.46 miles. So if the observer is looking straight ahead of him, he could see 3.46 miles. And assuming he's on a sphere, he could see 3.46 miles all around him. So no matter where he looked, he looked to the right, to the left, in every direction, the maximum he could see would be 3.46 miles. All right. Uh, so therefore, uh, the entire span of vision across uh, like uh, in front of him, like 180 degrees in front of him, would be double this figure. So 3.46 straight ahead of him, straight uh, to the right of him, to the left of him. Uh, so from left to right would be uh, 6.92 miles. So he, so he's able to see 6.92 miles, and that's what my screen dimensions are at the moment: 6.92 miles. So as you raise, uh, so now it's. 4.24 uh, so therefore 8.48 uh, miles so you're seeing 8.48 miles across and the horizon still appears as a straight line and it does so no matter how uh, you know if you even if you increase to uh, 110 feet it still appears uh, straight um, even though you can see further uh, the horizon is still straight my screen now represents uh, almost 27 uh, miles across uh, and therefore and, and still appears uh, straight okay uh, so I just wanted to show you that uh, and uh, now I'm going to increase in altitude in miles and you'll see how the curvature changes. Alright so now we're, we're going to increase in miles. So right now we're at about 9 miles which is about uh, the height of a typical airplane, probably a little bit higher than an airplane. Uh, but 
uh, you could see how the horizon uh, changes and how the curvature would appear at that height okay so right now uh, the my span of vision would be 533 miles or so across uh, right so as long as you're able to see 533 miles across you will see this uh, curvature appear assuming it's a sphere uh, even out of a plane uh, it may be difficult out of a plane because you have a, a small window you're looking out of and you may not be able to see 532 miles across uh, but if you if you do then you will see this uh, curve exactly like this um, or it's more likely that you're able to see a, a fraction of this uh, but who knows maybe, maybe you can't see further uh, but this is how it should appear uh, if we're on a sphere Okay. and the tilt you notice as at this height even at the height of an airplane uh, there's quite a bit of a tilt so 6.06 uh, degree tilt so in order for you to continually see the horizon the person would have to tilt his head down six degrees uh, for the horizon to be at that position all right so if you do not tilt your head down and you looked straight ahead on a sphere uh, the horizon would not be visible to you as a matter of fact the entire earth uh, may not be visible to you so you'd have to readjust downwards in order to see the horizon that is um, the, the the quality of a sphere and you'd ha it would have to lower as you rise in altitude and if you're noticing that it's, it does not lower uh, that could be proof that it's not a sphere all right so it needs to lower as you rise in altitude and, and this this can easily be proven uh, with the right equipment so six degree uh, is quite a quite a bit of a, uh, a tilt uh, downwards as you rise okay so now I'm just going to keep increasing so we're now we're yeah, 100 miles up in the air. Uh, we're able to see 880 miles straight in front of you, um, and therefore uh, about 16, 1700 uh, miles across. Okay, we're not able to see the entire Earth yet, but as you get higher, you'll notice uh, you'll you're, you'll be able to see the actual the entire diameter of the Earth, uh, and there is a magical height. So I'm just going to keep increasing. So right now we're at 300 and 400 miles uh, of course you can see a lot uh, further so remember what we're doing here assume that you're on uh, the North Pole the tip of the North Pole and you've risen in altitude 410 miles uh, and you've tilted your head down 39 degrees and this is how the earth would appear to you all right uh, again assuming uh, no obstruction no clouds nothing in the way uh, this is exactly how the horizon would look and, and that's how it would look uh, assuming we're on a sphere okay so I'm just gonna go all the way up uh, so so as you can see uh, you can see the curve uh, more and more pronounced uh, so the, the actual height in which you can see the entire diameter is actually 3,368 miles I'm just gonna stop at 65 just to show you what's happening um, so the observer is right here uh, he's able to see 3,957 miles straight in front of him uh, and to the right of him and to the left of him even behind him uh, and in every direction so if you remember the rea the radius of the earth in miles was 3,959 miles so that's we're pretty close to that right now right so if he was to look uh, down 89 degrees so if he was to tilt his head down 89 degrees he could potentially see uh, the entire earth and that's what I'm going to show you uh, right now so if he the observer now is right in the middle and he's look uh, we're at 3,368 uh, miles up straight up in the air and there is the observer so he's able to see uh, the entire uh, radius to the right and to the left therefore he can see the entire diameter therefore he can see the entire uh, northern hemisphere so remember he's uh, on top of the North Pole and he's able to see the entire northern hemisphere 3959 miles means that he's able to see uh, the equator at this height okay might be hard to for you to imagine uh, but we're, we're dealing with quite a height here and you could see uh, the equator okay remember I'm assuming you have perfect vision uh, you have let's say you have the most powerful telescope in the world you will be able to see um, the equator from there okay uh, so I just wanted to uh, bring it down again so now uh, again the tilt you can see it's close to 90 degrees the observer is moved down to here so I'm only showing you half of the the sphere right now so I'm just gonna lower down uh, and show you how it 
um, how it flattens out as I as it, so right now we're descending uh, back to the earth so as you get lower you'll see uh, less and less um, from left to right so right here let's say the observer is right in the m middle right here if he looks right he sees 3184 miles uh, and he sees 3184 miles in every direction um, and therefore the entire span of his vision would be double this so 6368 miles um, so that's not so that's why the the rest of the earth is cut off because it's outside of his peripheral vision uh, but as you get lower uh, you notice that less and less uh, is visible and that and, and we're pretty high up we're at 500 400 miles up in the air if you compare that to eight or nine miles uh, the height of an airplane uh, you'll see that we're dealing with huge um, uh, altitudes okay and it becomes uh, more and more apparent that using the curvature as an argument uh, may be a little difficult because there's it's such altitude that we're talking about see right now we're at at, at 20 miles uh, and the uh, and the curvature is there but you really in order to get up a high 20 miles uh, is, is not not something everybody can do uh, but th through this program you can see how it would actually look if it was a sphere uh, so one thing that you could use as an argument is this tilt this is a very easy uh, thing to use as an argument uh, as you rise in altitude the horizon needs to lower if it does not lower um, then uh, y you could potentially have proof that it's not a sphere uh, but if it's it's lowering then you could have proof that it is a sphere all right so this could be a key uh, piece of information to use in calculations um, rather than going out and and, and trying to uh, prove the curvature because at at, at five miles uh, it's there uh, but again you'd have to see you would be able to see about 400 miles across uh, to be able to notice this kind of a curvature and uh, we, we don't have those kind of luxuries and we have atmosphere in the way uh, we, uh, m many obstructions to this um, so but this tilt I'm sure can be uh, easily used uh, even uh, even an amateur can uh, can can pr prove this um, all right so I just wanted to share that with you uh, I'll show you once again uh, how the curve appears at the various altitudes so you just um, take that in all right, so we're at almost 2,000 miles, uh, almost 3,000 now. Now we're pushing the maximum. Okay, so it's the maximum. So there's nothing else beyond um, the the radius of the Earth. So there's nothing more to show. So I, I stopped at 3,300. So this uh, appears to be a magical number. So at this height, uh, you could see the entire um, you know face of the the sphere. Uh, Alright, so I just wanted to share that with you. I hope you find that interesting. Uh, until next time, take care and goodbye.